What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sav Attack once again, and AMD, well, Amazon is once again shipping AMD products that aren't supposed to be out yet early. This time it wasn't me, it was a YouTuber named Hardware Numbers. I'll leave a link to his video in the description below. But he's done some testing with overclocking on the 2700X. We're going to talk about what he hit as far as top of course overclock at what voltage and then the scores he received across various tests stick around welcome back so like i said the other youtuber will be linked in the description below he doesn't actually talk or describe anything or explain anything so i figured i'd go through it real quick in case you just need the numbers uh I guess vocally for you guys to hear out here. He has the Ryzen 7 2700X. It's currently clocked at 4.3 gigahertz at 1.5 volts. So it's pretty high voltage. He did have it on an EK water block. You can see in the video in the bottom corner that he's got that underwater. And I, I mean, this is okay. At the same time, what this is telling me as far as the new Ryzen line is that 4.3 gigahertz is probably gonna be near the top or the cap of the overclock that you're gonna be able to obtain. Especially seeing high voltages like that to maintain it, it really makes me think that we're not gonna have the possibility of 4.5, 4.6 gigahertz with an overclock. I think the realistic number is gonna be somewhere between 4.1 and 4.3. That being said, that's still gonna be an improvement over the 1000 series Ryzen processors and you're going to see a decent bump in IPC. However, I was surprised to see that once we start getting into testing that the single thread, even though the clock is higher, appears to be right around the same. So we're going to talk about why that might be here in a second. The memory he's rocking is going to be the G-Skill Trident Z 30. 600 megahertz it was running at 3600 megahertz the entire time keep this in mind because the likelihood of you getting the same numbers here if you're using memory that's going to be lower is of course going to be a, a lower possibility for you in particular he is at cas latency 14 and then the gpu he's running with it is a gtx 1080 that also appears to be underwater with an ek uh, full coverage block on it. And then now let's get into benchmarks. The first score is going to be from Cinebench All Core, which was 1970. That's a pretty good Cinebench score, seeing that the previous 1800X, 1700X, and 1700 all seem to be stuck within that 1800 to 1900 range. Of course, that wasn't underwater. Some people were getting up closer to 1900, but not quite steadily in the 1900 like we see here almost getting ready to break 2k if you're able to get a chip that maybe is silicon lottery you could break 2k and that would be pretty awesome the single threads where i get a little concerned as it shows that he was getting 180 on the single thread which tells me that the multi-threaded portion isn't so much benefiting from the uh, clock improvements but more than likely is benefiting from the higher memory uh, capabilities of this 2000 series Ryzen chip where you see it kind of just scale crazy up there and so what I'm really seeing here more than improvement on an IPC or of course just the improvement in speed on each core is actually more than likely going to be its compatibility with memory in particular so that's what I found odd is the single thread seems to be almost exactly like the previous generation maybe a little bit higher by one or two points but at the same time it's overclocked so much that I, I, I'm not seeing it. I, I've been able to hit 180 a single thread on almost all of the 1000 series at one time or another of course that is when I hit you know somewhere between 4 and 4.1 gigahertz now he does move on to do a CPU Queen benchmark, which he scored at 99,673, which does score pretty well above the 1800X. Like I said before, that really depends on the memory that the 1000 series processor was actually running with. And then the physics score for Firestrike was 22,208. He did do two games, Rise of the Tomb Raider, as well as World of Warcraft. It's really, really hard here 
to determine exactly how much the CPU is influencing these benchmarks because he does have this 1080 underwater. It looks like he's also staying steady above 2000 megahertz on the core clock, which you can do, uh, but you're gonna do it at most likely higher temperatures and have other issues going on with your GPU. This one's running at 2000, it's uh, you know underwater. Previously to it being underwater, it would be anywhere from 1890 to like 1975 or something like that, and it would start having throttling issues. So I wanted to point that out that it's really hard to determine what is going on here for the gaming benchmarks because he does have it in kind of an odd situation that most people might not actually be running it in. He did get uh, the GPU stayed above 98%. Uh, usage on Rise of the Tomb Raider and it did look like it was threaded very well in Rise of the Tomb Raider and that's also curious because yes that means that we're not bottlenecking the GPU with this CPU near as much in this particular game until we move on to World of Warcraft which seems to be a little bit more single threaded and you can see up in the top left the CPU usage is really strong on one core and one core alone because of this and because of the fact that he only ran 1080p he was getting somewhere between 30 to 40 percent gpu usage and i think this will scale better as he goes ahead and turns up the resolution of course like we've seen in the past and really running world of warcraft at 1080p on a gtx 1080 is overkill as it is the concerning part here is once again going to be that strength of that single threaded core on Ryzen and it's very apparent in World of Warcraft and not being able to maintain 120 hertz or 120 fps 420 hertz panels at 1080p is kind of concerning as well he did have it on high and there's probably some other tweaks that you could do to get it there but it did have some pretty frequent dips significantly below that down into the 80s i think i saw some into the 70s there for a little bit as well and that was while flying around azeroth so keep all of that in mind hope that you guys got some idea of where the 2700x is where i stand personally on this chip is if you already have a 1700x or you already have a 1700 or 1800x it doesn't appear that you're going to want to jump up to the 2000 series processors. This might change with the 2600 and below, but as it stands right now, this is going to be more of like one of those 6700K to 7700K upgrades where you're going to get minor improvements. You're going to get better memory support. Hopefully we get better chipset, uh, of course, compatibility. I think with the memory support, we're seeing a little bit of that. But if you're already on the platform, there's not going to be a huge reason for you to go sell and upgrade right away. Maybe wait, you know, for the next set of chips to come from AMD and we'll see how it goes. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Go subscribe to Hardware Numbers and I'll see you next Tuesday.